the meaning of dominion? Dominion is very simple to dominate. He made the whole earth, he made the heavens, he made he put things under the earth, and he said, I am going to create man who will dominate over my creation. And every kingdom has a territory and every king has a dominion. If you do not exercise authority where you are operating, you are not operating in dominion. You are not walking in dominion. A man who walks in dominion is a man who exercises authority over his world, over his space, and over everything that God created. You are not created to be a slave. You are not created to be a victim. You are not created to be a lesser entity. He said, let us make man in our image. The way we exercise authority, the way we take control, the way we call things and things come to pass, the way we speak and it comes to pass. Let us share that relationship, that status with man. And Jesus, the Bible said Jesus did not count it robbery that he was equal with God. So don't count it robbery that you are of the same image with God. God. Don't count it robbery that you are sharing the same mandate with God. He, he, he does not share his deity with us but he shares his image with us. Am I talking to somebody here? He shares his likeness with us. That means the way God speaks, he wants you to speak that way. The way he commands, he wants you to command that way. If you see what you don't like, uh, you just speak forth as a man in dominion and that thing will obey you. From today, sickness and disease shall obey you. From today, demons shall obey you. Every other being outside of God uh, is mandated to obey you. Am I talking to somebody here? But if you do not know who you are, you begin to live like a lesser being. The fall of Adam, we don't want to go into the story of the fall of Adam. We want to go into the story of the victory that Jesus Christ wrought for us at the cross of Calvary. Whatever Adam lost in the place of dominion, Jesus had recovered and restored it to us. Somebody, somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. He has restored it unto us. And so we must not live like men without hope. We mustn't live like men without authority. Praise the Lord. You are called to govern your territory. You are called to exercise power in your territory. From today... Anyone who wants to violate your territory or come into your territory without permission shall be arrested in the name of Jesus. Can I say to somebody here, no demon has the power to fly over your roof without your permission. No witch, no wizard has the power to fly over your roof. And from today... Anyone that tries to fly over your roof uh, shall fall down and turn naked. In the name of Jesus. Have you not seen? I saw a video clip of a, a woman who turned into a bird and flew into a hospital uh, ward to go and attack a little, a little child. In the, I don't know how many of you saw it. A little child in the maternity ward. Uh, the God of that little child... Uh, became stood up for that little child and he couldn't attack that child and the ministry was frustrated the woman the bed turned to human being and she was naked lift up your right hand beginning from today anyone who turns to a bed a snake a lion an ant whatever it is that comes to attack you shall be exposed In the mighty name of Jesus, 
You are created to exercise dominion. You are ex created to exercise authority. You know, Luke chapter 19, verse 41. Luke chapter 19, verse 41. Let's quickly get there. Are you there? If you didn't come with your Bible, you were waiting to be, to be using the screen today. <laughs> today. Not today. Praise the Lord. Ah! May the Lord not weep over any one of us. Verse 41, are you there? Now when he had come near, he looked at the city and wept over it. There are many of us here who are meant to walk in dominion, who are meant to walk in authority and power, who are meant to exercise control over the world that we live, but are victims. Beginning from today, I pray for you, you shall not be the reason for heaven to weep. Jesus wept over the city. Ah! Why did he weep? There are many of you here that ought to be MDs over multinational companies and you're still employees. Ah! Somebody hear me. Before the year is over, that man who was meant to be an MD over a multinational company and has refused to resign or retire to go and start his multinational company. If you don't do it on time, you will be sacked. The house is quiet. If you don't do it on time, you will be sacked. When you ought to be an employer of thousands of people, when you ought to enter into the fullness of your calling in the marketplace, for fear of stepping out, you are still earning salaries. Meanwhile, you are meant to control the riches of the air and of the sea and beneath the earth. And you are still earning, earning small whatever, is, whatever they pay you. If you don't resign, you will be sacked. Praise the Lord. Until, let me tell you something. I lived in a location for about 14 years or so, 12 or 14 years. And I was very comfortable in the place. I didn't know that my time had expired in the place. When fire got at the house, we renovated the house. We used highest quality of materials. It wasn't our house. Wherever I lived as a tenant, I made sure I took care of it as my house. The quality, we used vit, uh, vitrified ceramics while the owner was using ceramic tiles in the house. So we enjoyed the house. The rent was very low. The man was not increasing. Because we are taking care of the house, the man was not increasing our rent, uh, you know. But we had, a, we had, we had outgrown the place. In, in two months, armed robbers attacked us twice. I started asking God why. The answer was, you have outlived the place. I came into the place without a car. I had gotten so many cars. And the people that saw me when I was trekking into the place are now seeing me changing cars and driving different kinds of cars. They say, I think this man, we need to also take our own. I pray, I, look, let me advise you. This is not prayer. Let me advise you. Be careful of where you live. If you are the only shining king in that location, move. Is somebody hearing me? If you are the only one that is flaunting wealth, move to where your, we your wealth will become insignificant. Am I talking to somebody here? Praise the Lord. We moved to a new place. And we're enjoying a five-bedroom house. 
a compound. But after two years, even before two years was over, those, the landlord and the landlady, it was a two-wing apartment. We were living on this side. We were living on this side. They were living on that side. They started harassing us. We were taking water from that side. The small gates that we had used to enter, to go and turn on water, to pump our own side of water, they used to lock it. So we'd go outside the main gate to go and knock on their main gate. Is that not quick notice? <laughs> Praise the Lord. They kept harassing us until if, may God bless that my landlord and that my landlady. If they did not harass us, we would still have been tenants. It was when the trouble was so much that Mama K started packing every time she comes back from work. She will pack things and put into cattle. She will buy cattle. God have mercy on you if you have Mama K as a wife. <laughs> she, she will pack her things, put in the cattle, send them down to the garage and say, minus one day. <laughs> she did not find out whether I had money in the account to move out of the place or not. Her own is, when she has moved the cotton down, as she comes up, she will say, minus one day, let it enter my ears. Praise the Lord. But for that harassment, we will still have been slaves. That woman and that man pushed us to own a house in Lagos. Praise the Lord. I am saying this to say, that if you outlive your employment and you don't live on time, they will sack you. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm talking to somebody in this service. The time for you to become a multi billionaire has come. Receive grace, receive courage in the name of Jesus. Somebody was saying, Where is Bishop coming from? I hope I've explained myself. Uh huh. Verse 42, why did Jesus weep? He said, if you had known, even you, at least in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. I pray for someone here, every hidden opportunity shall be revealed to you. Every hidden opportunity shall be revealed to you. I speak to someone here. May the eyes serve of heaven. May the anointing of God come upon your eyes. That you will see the things that belong to your peace. Jesus Christ said, if only they had known, even in this thy day. The things that will enable you walk in dominion. If only you had known the package that heaven has made. If only you had known the things that he has prepared for you that loves God. When they ask for money to do ministry, you are the first to come out. When it is time for rescue mission, you are there. KDF, you open your house. Listen to me. There is something the Lord has prepared for you. You can and not serve him in vain. He said, I have not asked Jacob to seek me in vain. God is not a tax master. He is a rewarder. If he sends you on an errand, he will give you a reward. Am I talking to somebody here? He said, there are things that belong to your peace. How many of us know it? Lift up your hand and say, oh Lord, forgive me for not walking in the light of what you have prepared for me. God wants us to exercise dominion. We are preparing to enter into a new year. What you could not accomplish this year, may it not elude you next year. But I like to say to somebody here, before December is over, God will deliver unto you the full package of 2022. There shall be no rollover. There shall be no carryover. 
It doesn't matter how long it has taken. What God had ordained for you for the year 2022 shall be delivered to you. Let that amen resound. So God wants us to walk in dominion. And so when Jesus Christ came, he made a profound statement. Because you cannot be a king without a kingdom. Is it possible? You cannot be a king without a kingdom. And you cannot have a kingdom without a territory. And you cannot say you are a king and you do not exercise dominion over the territory, the land, the people, and the resources. Am I talking to somebody here? God expects that you will exercise dominion over a territory. You will exercise dominion over a people and over the resources that he has put in, in, under, on, and in the air. Am I talking to someone here? Praise the Lord. Please write this down. You cannot have a great God and do small things. You cannot have a great God and do small things. Luke chapter 12 verse 32. It is the pleasure of God to give you the kingdom. And he has given us the kingdom. But I don't know whether we know it. There are many of us that just are satisfied that they are born again. And that they will make heaven by and by. But there's something more than that. When you got born again, hear me? God gave you the greater of, greatest of the gifts. He said he gave you the kingdom. Many of us are looking for the, for the things in the kingdom. But hey, listen to me. The king over a kingdom has control over everything within the kingdom. You can take it at any time. At the asking, you can enjoy it. But some of us do not even know that we have the kingdom. So we are just looking for pecs. We're just looking for the little, little things in the kingdom. Some of us are born again and we're still begging. Hey, listen, oh my God. I pray that someone will, somebody's mind will be open today. That you are not a slave, but you have the kingdom. You are called to be a king. You are called to be a priest. You are a king with a kingdom. Are you in Luke chapter 12 verse 32? Look at your neighbor and say, I'm a king with a kingdom. Can we read Luke chapter 12 verse 32 together? One, two, go. Oh, some people read it. Some people are still opening. Keep, I'll wait for you. Open. You're, you're only taking my time. Can you all open there, please? Luke chapter 12 verse 32. One, two, go. Can we rise on our feet and read that scripture? My God. One, two, go. Again. Fear not, little children, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He did not promise you dominion in vain. He backed up his promise and his mandate. He says, fear not. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Come on, shout at me. I've got the kingdom. I will exercise dominion. Please take your seats. The biggest thing that has ever happened to any believer is to be given the kingdom. You got the kingdom, you've got everything. You've got everything.
If you have the key to that gate, it can be just be one small key, but you have access to the whole compound. I pray for someone here that this kingdom will begin to answer for you. But what if every believer has been given the kingdom, why are we not enjoying the things in the kingdom? Answer number one. The kingdom has mysteries. Only those who unlock the mysteries enjoy the kingdom. The kingdom is not there for the asking. It's not there for every Tom, Harry, and Dick. Everything in the kingdom is coded. Am I talking to somebody here? Everything in the kingdom is coded. And he says uh, in his word uh, that he has given us the keys. The keys of the kingdom. So, can I have four, four of us come out here, please? Four of us. Be fast. Some people are missing their blessings. No, you sit down. You sit down. Go and sit. You come. You were looking this way, looking. This. Why must you look for other people to come before you? Praise the Lord. Please face me. This four gentlemen and lady got born again. And when they got born again, the father did not leave them without the gift of the kingdom. It was his pleasure to hand over the kingdom to you. But you know, if you come to the admin block, there are many rooms and every of those rooms have keys. If you come through my main door, there is another key. There are about six doors within my office and they all have keys. If all you are satisfied with is walking around these premises, you have gotten your own kingdom. And there are people that come to this church and all they do is walk around the field and go back. Some come. Some come to play ball. They don't come into this auditorium. Some come to play ball and they come into this auditorium. They got the blessing of the altar. Everything in the kingdom is delivered to us in parcels as mysteries with keys. If you do not locate the key to those puzzles, you will live like an ordinary mere man. So, these four people have heard that it is God's pleasure for them to walk in dominion and the kingdom has been given to them. They have received salvation and hear this. This man sat on the scriptures and he got the key to holiness. And he has, he's just satisfied with the key to holiness. So this man does not bear grudge. He does not steal. He does not commit fornication. He does not backbite. He doesn't murmur. He just is holy. He doesn't care about the key to wealth. He doesn't care about the key to divine health. He doesn't care about the key to honor. Am I talking to somebody here? He doesn't care about the key to power. But as far as the key to holiness is concerned, he is using it well. So, he is holy and yet poor. You are not poor. The name of Jesus. Are you with me? He is holy yet poor. He is holy yet sick. Why? 
He didn't get the keys to the other ones. He just got the key to unlock the grace for holiness. This sister got the key of power. If he prays for someone, the person is slain under the anointing. But he has not bothered to find out about the key of holiness. So, he's casting out demons and yet he's lying. He's casting out demons and yet he's grumbling. He's casting out demons. If he lays hand on somebody, the person is slain under the anointing. And yet he is still having health challenges. Because she majored on the key to power. And did not bother about the other keys. But the mind of God is that you will have the totality of the kingdom. Not just being holy, for he is holy. Not just uh, all power in heaven and on earth is given unto me. Go ye therefore. Not just that. Uh, he says, uh, you, you know the grace of God. That though he was rich, yet he became poor. That by his poverty, you might have the exchange of wealth and prosperity. So this man sat under a great and powerful ministration like this and he located the key to wealth. Every night, not you, not you. I'm only using you for example. You are good people. Praise the Lord. He's got the key to wealth, but every night demons are terrorizing him in the dream. Every night, the demon of incubus and succubus will come and be having sex with him in the night. Female sex demon and male sex demon. That's incubus and succubus. In the morning, he's doing well in his company. He's making some good money. But in the night, he is a victim to small, small demons. You find yourself, since you came to Lagos, you have never gone to Bar Beach. Meanwhile, you are swimming in the Bar Beach. What are you doing at the Bar Beach? Am I talking to somebody here? Because he got the key to wealth. What does Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 tell us? It is God who giveth us the power to get wealth. He is blessing everybody in church. He is supporting the work of the kingdom. And yet he is a victim. From today, everyone that is a victim to demons in their dreams, be delivered. The food you have been eating in your house is not enough. Why are you eating in the dream? Everyone that the enemy has been preparing tables for in the dream. Today, I scatter that table. But this gentleman... Your own, he got the key to rescue mission. He got the key to wealth. He got the key to power. He got the key to holiness. Who is the, greater Christ, who is the greatest Christian among the four of them? The mind of God no, please bear with me. Whatever grace the Lord has given to you is not a license for you to stay on that grace alone. That grace is for you to function. But as a believer, you've got the kingdom. And when you have the kingdom, you must locate all the keys in the kingdom. Am I hearing, am I talking to somebody here? 
He's got the key to marriage and is having a very wonderful marriage. You may not be able to have all of them at the same time, but you must make sure that you stay on the word. You keep discovering keys after keys. You keep discovering keys after keys. That's why we have never come to church on Wednesday and we say there is no message to preach. Because there is a key that you must discover. We have never come to church on Sunday and said there is no message to preach. God wants you to acquire a new key. Lift up your hand and say, I must acquire a new key. It pleases the Father to do what? Give you the kingdom. Not only that, he says uh, he will also give you the keys of the kingdom. Because if I hand over a car to you and don't give you the keys to the car. Have I given you any gift? You must search for the keys. So when he was preaching in parables and, and they asked, the disciples came back and asked him, why is it that you're always talking in parables? He said, look, I'm talking to two kinds of audiences. There are those who are outside. I need to preach them into the kingdom. But for you that are inside, I show you the mysteries. But to them, I speak in parables because it does not belong to them. You can't be in the kingdom and not discover the mysteries of the kingdom. You can be in the kingdom and not use the keys of the kingdom. Am I talking to somebody here? God is not angry with you. It's just that you have not discovered the keys. Believers, if we spend time to discover the keys of the kingdom and use them, we will walk in dominion. One day, I was ministering and I laid hands on a lady on a Wednesday service. And the lady held my hand, gripped my hand and was fighting to throw my hand up. Just imagine what will happen. You are before the congregation, pastor, pastor. You put hand on the lady's head and the lady flung your hand. So I had to use all the energy, all the food that I ate that day. I had to release all the energy and press the hand on her head. And the power that was coming from her was not a feminine power. So as I was doing that, to force my hand on the head so I'm not disgraced, I heard a voice, very gentle, not by power. Not by might. I immediately, I knew that that was the Lord speaking. So I asked him immediately, Lord, what do I do? He said, blow on her. So I just, <laughs> as I just did, <laughs> you know, Bagada Church was a smaller church. The thing landed her on the door. She was trying to run out of the church. I walked up to her. She was shaking the door, shaking the door. I blew her again. She took the, the anointing, took her to the back. She broke the white chairs. I don't know why I didn't ask her to replace those chairs. Praise the Lord. What happened? The Lord just gave me a key. And as soon as I got that key, ministration became easy. That's why today I can stand and I look at a demon that is in somebody and he will see me and he will run away. I can come without touching you and I just blow and the anointing will slay you. I got the key. How many keys have you gotten? It's not just about flipping the Bible, flipping the Bible, flipping the Bible. I am reading, I'm using daily devotion. I'm using daily, daily devotion. The one that our father is teaching us every morning 
is okay. Are you hearing me? Stop running up and down looking for a daily devotion on, on social media to connect to. The food that our father is giving us every morning is okay. And you know, what we are getting from our father is not milk, it's meat. So that you can discover the keys of the kingdom and not become a slave in the kingdom. Am I talking to somebody here? Enough of running around looking for where prayer is going on. Get the key and be praying for people. Hello? Are you still happy with me? Get the keys and be praying for people. You have been in church and you are born again. You have received the kingdom. 20 years you are a believer. And you are still running around looking for where prayer is going on. I mean, while every morning we are praying here, every evening we are praying here, every afternoon we are praying here. Is somebody hearing me? From today, you will, may I come, rise up on your feet. I pray for an insatiable affection for the keys of the kingdom. I pray for a, a, a craving for more of the keys of the kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus, you have been babies for too long. Wake up and discover the keys and use the keys to enjoy the benefits of the kingdom. Shout out, God, the kingdom. I go for the keys. Where do I get the keys? They are all hidden in the world. Today you say, I want to learn about wealth. Spend some time. Go to the bookshop. Read about books on wealth. Keep studying it until you unlock the key. The key to wealth answers to grace for wealth. The key to wealth answers to inheritance for wealth. The key to wealth answers to the seed you sow for wealth. And the key for wealth answers to your work. Is somebody hearing me? Is somebody hearing me? There is grace for wealth. There is an inheritance for wealth that the grace brings it to you. Is somebody hearing me? It answers to you sowing seeds to provoke and activate those graces. And then it answers to your faith. But not only that, faith without works is dead. If you like to say amen to God will make you a billionaire 20 times and roll on the floor. If you don't understand these keys, you cannot be wealthy. Thank God for the people that dash you money. If they keep dashing you money, you will still remain a beggar. Somebody hearing me? Oh, this church is so good because they give you money. We will give you money. We will continue to give you money. But when will you start giving other people money? So long as you are receiving, your hand is under. For the law of giving and receiving, the one who gives, the hand is up. The one who receives, the hand is under. Am I talking to somebody here? There is a season for receiving and there is a season for giving. If you stay on the season of receiving all the time, you will remain a receptacle. You will only be a receiver and not a giver. And until you become a giver, you cannot prosper. Is somebody hearing me? Somebody is clapping. Help him to clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't let anybody talk you out of giving. I was telling the leaders today. I said, you give your money to do this work, the work will be done. You withhold your money, the work will still be done. If God used you to do this work yesterday and you now allow pride to enter, 
or somebody to demotivate you or demobilize you and you withhold your money, you have only created opportunity for others to be blessed. Listen to me. All the programs set for this year, we have done all. We have not missed one. And the remaining one we will also accomplish. <laughs> Praise the Lord. As you see me stand here, I cannot explain how we have funded all those programs. I cannot explain. But I just know that God, who has called us into this work, he has not left us. The grace that has worked for a father is working for me. He's working for you and I. Am I talking to somebody here? So humble yourself and know that when you give, you are actually activating the key of wealth. Is somebody hearing me? Is somebody hearing me? Time would fail me. I want to charge each and every one of us. Make sure that you do not allow anyone to discourage you. Because you're running your race. Hello? Anyone who is not helping you to run faster is your enemy. Anyone who comes to you to tell you what will cause your feet to be weak from running is your enemy. Tell him thank you. And uh, the gates. Take the door. There was a sister here that somebody came to her some years ago to say, are you still in Salem? And she said, since I came to Salem, you have not visited me. The first time you're visiting me, you're coming to ask me, are you still in Salem? The door is open. Leave my house. Until you do that to some people, their head will not reset. Am I talking to somebody here? Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, if you come to my house and not motivate me and not mobilize me and not charge me up, my door will be open for you. And if you don't live on time, my dog will be released to hunt you out. You are meant to mobilize me. You are meant to motivate me. You are meant to energize me. You are not called to discourage me. What I see written on your face is encourager. Why would you be a discourager? Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Take your seat, people of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give God praise for this word. We're going to stay on this. Because we want to enter into the new year different. We want to enter into the new year as people of dominion. Hallelujah. We do not want to disappoint God. When God turns and looks at us, he will say, this one's got it. They got the kingdom. They got the mysteries. They got the keys. Everybody say, I've got the kingdom. I've got the mysteries. I've got the keys. I will yet discover the kingdom. I will yet discover the mysteries. I will yet use the keys. Rise up on your feet. Those who discover the kingdom keys to health know that his stripes were the price he paid for our healing. And so you just lay hand on any part of your body that you are sick. Those you know that he's by his name, you will cast out demons and you'll be healed. You know that his, the power of God is embedded in his name. This morning, I want you to pray for yourself. As someone who has dominion, as someone who has, the, who understands the mystery of healing, deliverance, uh, and somebody who has the keys. The name of Jesus is the key. 
And I want you to please lift up your hand and put one hand on the place where you feel the pain and pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Come on, come on. Today you pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Command that healing. Command that healing. You were not a child. You have been in this kingdom for so long. The time to exercise your kingdom right is now. Come on, exercise dominion over that yoke, over that disease, over that, over that trouble. Come on, exercise your kingdom power. Exercise your kingdom power. Hey, Makalabarabo Sakaya. Libra Badosukaba. Use the key of the name of Jesus. Use the key of the blood of Jesus. Use the key of the Spirit of God. Provoke the anointing. Come on. Provoke the anointing for healing. You are not living this meeting without sickness, without disease. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's the name. Come on, use the name of Jesus. Use the name of Jesus. Hey, man, the name of Sakaya. gave us a key he said my name he said ask the father anything in my name look, everybody look at me I want you to tell me what you see or who you see I'm going to call a name you will tell me who you see Archbishop Sam Amaga Tell me who you saw. Them. Come and tell me. Tell me who did you see in your minds? Did you, when I called that name, did you see the person bearing that name in your mind? Did you see the picture of your father? Come on, come on, come on. Did you see the picture of your father? Put your hands together for Jesus if you saw the picture of your father. Listen to me, folks every time you pray in the name of Jesus and you call that name by faith, the honor of the name shows forth. He will not show forth if you don't call it by faith. The moment you call the name of Jesus by faith, the honor of the name shows forth. A woman was going to skid into the lagoon on this dead man land bridge and she shouted, Jesus! The tires hung on the railing because the honor of that name showed forth. I want to give my God, I want to give you an opportunity to uh, look at look at this. John 15, John 15, 16. He said, You have not chosen me I have chosen and ordained you that ye go and bring forth fruit everybody's a key everybody's a key I didn't hear you say key he said ye have not chosen me but I have chosen you that ye go and bring forth fruits 
and that your fruits abide. Three things. That means you step out, you bring forth, and then you follow up until that soul is established. Key, he said, whatsoever he asks the Father in my name shall be given to you. He has given us the kingdom. He has given us the mysteries of the kingdom. He has given us the keys of the kingdom. You suffer, you complain if you don't know this. So in the next minute, my meeting is, the, the message is over. In the next moment, I want you to close your eyes. What do you want to see happen to you before the end of this year? Listen to me before you pray. You are going to say, God, I will go out. I will bring forth my five souls. I will follow them up to abide. And then I place a demand. And you're going to place a demand. And he says, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name will be given to you. Can we pray with keys right now? Come on, open your mouth. And then make that commitment to God. And use the key. gift package for you God 
you will receive the kind of gifts you have never received in all your Christmas holidays. All you need to do is to do your own part. I want to pray for some people here. The Lord emphasized it so much. Those of you that you have been struggling to step out from your place of work. But out of fear, I don't ask you to come out. Just lift up your hand wherever you are. You want to receive courage to step out. Courage to step out. Courage to step out. Heavenly Father, today I pray that you release courage upon this one whose hands are lifted up. Courage to step out. Courage to do big things. You are a great God in them. They cannot do small things in the mighty name of Jesus. And you are in this meeting. You are in this meeting. And you have not given your life to Jesus. You, the kingdom is not yours. You can receive the kingdom in this service. You can receive the kingdom in this service. You can receive Jesus Christ in your life. I want you to lift up your hand wherever you are. You say, I want to receive Jesus. I want to receive the kingdom. Can you step out? Come on, I see that hand. Run out, run out, run out. Let's put our hands up. Run out, yes, run out. I saw that hand up there. I said, come on, come on, come on. You say, I want to receive Jesus into my life. I want to have this kingdom. I want to have this kingdom. The kingdom of darkness has oppressed me for too long. I want to have this kingdom walking in my life. Come on, come on. I thought we know how to celebrate God more than this. me Lord Jesus thank you for this word that I have heard I ask that you come into my life forgive me of my sins I believe that you died for me I believe that you are my Lord and so I confess you now in the mighty name of Jesus I give my life to you. From this day henceforth, I live for you for the rest of my life. If you pray that prayer online, you are born again. Please, there are lines, there are numbers. Call those, any of those counseling lines and they will help you. Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. storm 
end today in the name of Jesus I pray that this altar will fight for her will fight for her will fight for her in the mighty name of Jesus thank you heavenly father let's put let everybody shout a big amen put your hands together for Jesus as those of us with your tights please step for step up I want to take the tight before I step down tight us tight us tight us tight us come forward with your tight we are in church that believes in tightening from creation from creation Jesus God Almighty oh I love this we can see the number clearly now praise the Lord from the Garden of Eden God told Adam eat everything I've given you but this one this one tree don't touch it that was tight of trees I pray for us that we shall not touch the tree in the garden of your wealth may you not eat of the fruit that is meant for the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Heavenly Father we bring our tithe before you and we ask that you receive the fruits, the fragrance in the mighty name of Jesus. As they drop this tithe on this altar, may this altar fight for you in the name of Jesus. May you enjoy this kingdom. May the mysteries of wealth be unveiled to you. May you reuse the keys of wealth. In Jesus' name, drop it on the altar. Put your hands together for the Lord. to be upstanding but we bless the name of the Lord for our bishop while you're upstanding just stretch your hand and ask that the commanded blessing to rest upon our bishop for so much that has come out of him that the Lord will use him like never before to bring the grace more upon the lives of his people Lord will bless you Blessed be your holy name. We ask with thanksgiving. In Jesus' most powerful and exalted name, we are praying. Can I get an amen? Blessed be God. It's time for us to give our covenant seed. And while I agree that you package it, please permit me that I'm doing this on behalf of my mother, Mama Betty. She's at the teenage church, and I have the permission of the bishop to continue. Okay, please, I would like us to have our offering packaged. And please be upstanding while we as well give. You know, the Bible speaking in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And if you're a cheerful giver in the house this morning, I would like you please to be upstanding and have that seed in your hand. Send it an errand. Send it an errand. Fade down on my voice. 
Father, we want to thank you for an opportunity to be in your presence to have this offering given. From the abundance of what you have blessed us with, we ask, Lord, that you bless it to the glory of your holy name. We ask with thanksgiving. In Jesus' most powerful and exalted name, we have prayed. The faith and my voice. Creator of the universe, what can't you do? Yeah, what can't you do? Thanksgiving. Amen. On this note, I want to call on Sister Jenna Gia and any other person that have Thanksgiving to say, Lord, you have been faithful. I want us to celebrate God this morning, that God is faithful and let us dance because I am still expectant that I've seen, uh, even though I have had so much Thanksgiving, I will yet have even a greater one in the name of Jesus. So let's celebrate. I said the living God oh, uh -huh. everybody know Say not to
Hallelujah. God is faithful. Ah, just last week, just last week Saturday, our father was here to activate upon our life the anointing for life and divine protection. And then today the enemy had the gut to want to nullify the word that had been released. And we have already prayed that the word of our father will not fall to the ground. Just as they did not allow the word of Saul to fall to the ground, it came to pass. Our sister's deadness said this morning at 4 a.m., one devilish man woke up. Oh, it's you. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, Anthony. That this morning, a man woke up by the instruction from the pit of hell and carried cutlass and started cutting people around the compound. And they broke into his own room that I will kill you. He caught several people, but God was silent. Even though he entered into his house, into his apartment, 4 a.m. this morning, could not release the cutlass to cut him. Wow. Can someone say wow? Wow. wow. That can only be God. That others were caught. Come on, but this man know. was dead. Can we celebrate God? Can we celebrate God? Can we celebrate God? We celebrate God? Ah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yesterday, still talking about the anointing for life and divine protection. The, the consultant of Salem Football Club was returning after an engagement in Uyo to Abuja. He said he didn't know that there was seat at home whatever in uh, in the east he thought it was only Monday to Friday so they traveled yesterday so when they got to a village in Enugu he said the vehicle that was in front of them they shot two people dead he called me and his voice was shaking he said, Daddy, please pray for us. Pray for us. Pray for us. I told him the anointing for life and divine protection is upon you. Amen. And you cannot die. This morning, he got home safely in Abuja and called me and I spoke with him alive, strong, himself and the wife. This God, Naelele. I said, this God, Naelele, hallelujah. God in Nawaya, God in Nahelele, God in Nawaya, nobody, nobody be like God, nobody be like Every testifier, every thanksgiver, Janet and Tony Wonders, I pray for you that you have reason to yet testify. The hand of the Lord rests upon you. You will mount up with wings as, as eagles. You will run and you will not be weary. The Lord will cause you to laugh. You will have reason to laugh. You will have reason to laugh in the mighty name of Jesus. You will look for your enemies, you will not find them. Because the Lord has hidden you under his pavilion. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that lifting will come for you. Promotion will come for you. Every testifier and thanksgiver in the house, receive your lifting. 
receive your promotion in the name of Jesus. You can